Okay, so this is my uh, mid 70s uh, Thunderbird. Um, has the uh, Ford uh, 9 inch rear end. You can tell the 9 inch because of the uh, no cover on the back. Uh, it unbolts from the front and everything pulls out that way. What I'm going to be doing today is installing a spool in my rear end. This is what it looks like. Just a solid piece of metal. You uh, take your spider gears out of your rear end and put this in and it gives you a palsy. Uh, what I usually do on these, uh, what I have been doing is uh, I usually weld this, take the spider gears, weld them together, but um, I haven't had very good luck with the 9 inches. Uh, they usually break on me after a derby or so. Um, I have a lot better luck with the uh, smaller ends with the cover on the back. I seem to seem to do pretty well welding those up and they stay pretty good, but these 9 inches for some reason they don't. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to pull the, uh, first thing we're going to do is pull the axles out. I've already got this side done. There's just uh, four bolts there you have to undo. Um, I had to undo my brake lines and pull the, pull the whole assembly out. So I'm going to do that over on this side. There's the, uh, get some light here. There's the, the bolts in there we have to undo. It's just an access hole in the front. Stick your socket in through there and, and undo the bolts. And I'll also just undo the brakes in the back here. Undo the uh, wheel cylinder and pull the whole thing out as an assembly. Then we're going to go underneath and uh, pull the drive shaft and unbolt the uh, I'll bolt the rear carrier center section here and take that out. Then we'll put our uh, rear spool in. So here we go. Okay, so we got a rear end out. Uh, for anybody that hasn't seen one, there's what the Ford uh, 9 inch looks like. Um, so, what we're going to have to do now take the uh, main, or just take the bearing caps off, take the bearings out, that'll allow the whole thing to come out. Then, we're going to unbolt the ring gear on the edge there, and then that'll allow us to pull the uh, center part apart to. Uh, the spider ears out and put in our new piece. Uh, so that's with that I'm kind of glad I did take this rear end apart from uh, when I welded it. There's a pile of uh, my old welding and I don't know what else is in there but uh, the gears look good on it so hopefully I didn't, didn't hurt the rain gear and the pinion gear anyway. That's the main thing. So anyway we'll pop that apart and uh, see what she looks like.
So as you can see, that didn't go as good as I planned. Uh, because I had this rear end uh, welded up before, it's creating me some problems. I had, uh, I actually had the spider gears welded to the edge here. And then when I put the other one on, I had them all welded together. Uh, those welds broke. Of course, they went all through here. Um, when they broke, the pins stayed welded to the spider gears. So there's three pins here that usually drive out to take your your pins out and uh, two of those were snapped off so I had to get those out and now I can't get it out or this is what happened to the, the pins the uh, pieces of spider gear and weld and stuff all went if you can see that an upper it's all around that pin and now it won't come out and I've beat on it so much now that the head of it's it's bigger here than it used to be so it won't go through so I'm just going to cut that off drive it back through the other way and then we'll be set to go. So that's about as far as I can go on that for now but I went ahead and uh, cleaned everything else up get her all ready to go back together. All I use I used to have a uh, just a bucket and some uh, parts washer uh, solution there and that works good for me. So anyway that's that. Uh, we'll get a uh, grinding wheel and get that cut off and get a new pin and uh, start putting it back together. Okay, so here's where we're at. Finally, I'm getting my rear end apart. Uh, if you've ever welded your rear end gears together before, I'd suggest uh, not doing this. Just start with a, a new rear end. You shouldn't have any trouble. I ended up actually uh, cutting the center pin and trying to drive it out, and ended up having to break my uh, spider gears in half to actually get it apart. So it was quite a bit of work. So what we're going to do now, uh, we're going to uh, install this in our rear end, Oop. put a pin through, and we'll install our ring gear on here, and uh, bolt the uh, bolter back together, and then get, get her bolted back in the carrier. So here we go. Okay, that's basically it. Got our uh, spool in there, got it all back together. Uh, a few things to note. Our ring gear here, we uh, torque these to 80 foot pounds. Um, we're going to torque these bearing caps to uh, 80 foot pounds when we're done. And then these little retainers just go on here, go through the hole there just to keep those from turning back out on us. And they bolt in. I got my dial indicator on here now. I know you can't see that very well, but what we're looking for here is about um, 12 thousandths backlash. So all you're going to do is take something here and hold your pinion so it doesn't move. Just wiggle this back and forth. Oh, turn the whole thing. And you just want to that little bit of play. When you hear that click, you're doing it right. That's we got ten thousands right on. So ours is perfect. We don't have to adjust it. Um, 
what I actually did before I took it apart, I did take a marker and uh, put a little mark on each one of these one of these retainers so I knew exactly where they want to put it back together so we really didn't have to adjust it. If you did need to, if you needed to adjust it to get more backlash you would just turn this one back, probably go back like one hole and then go to the other side, do the same thing there. That'll move your your ring gear away from the pinion, give you a little more backlash. Um, if you needed, to, if there was too much backlash, you just do the opposite. Just back this one off and turn this one on until you get it positioned where it needs to go. So what we're going to do now, I'm just going to uh, put these retainers on, put them on, and take a little bit of brake cleaner, and I'll clean this uh, this gasket uh, surface here, and we'll drop her back in and put her back together. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much it. Get her all back together. Uh, I want to put the uh, the rear end uh, back together in there. I used a little bit of this uh, Permatex Ultra Black uh, gasket maker. Been using this for a while. I never had a problem with it. it works really well. So uh, now we got our rear spool in. As you can see, we spin our tire and. They both spin the same. All that's left to do is now we'll take her out this summer and try her out. See how she holds up. Plan on uh, probably doing a couple of derbies with this car hopefully. If she makes it through two. And uh, I'm also going to do some side-by-side uh, -side, uh, mud races. Uh, our local uh, Mud uh, Mud Truck Club, uh, Colchester County Off Road Racing has a few events uh, where you can take your derby car in and, and race around the mud track. So it's a lot of fun. Gives you a chance to do something something with your derby car where you know you're gonna be able to survive it and uh, and use her again. So it's just a lot of fun. Anyway, so I'll have those videos on probably sometime this summer. But as far as our rear spool, that's it. Hopefully it works out for us. We'll talk to you later.